10 fashion mistakes that instantly age us. That's what we're talking about today. But we're not just going to stop there. We're not going to bring up all the things that are mistakes. We're going to talk about how to change it and choose differently so that they're better and not mistakes. So I'm excited. I think it's going to be fun. And let me just say first off before we get really into it, the most important and beautiful thing that you can ever wear is your self-confidence. And so you wear what pleases you. This is just a fun time that we can spend together and talk about things that are maybe outdated, out of style, and just aren't really current. So if you're somebody that wants to be current, that wants to stay in style, this video is for you. If you're somebody that likes the way that you dress, you have confidence in the way that you dress, and you don't really care what the trends are or the current styles, you do you that is so okay i just want to say that up front i think about women that are in their 80s and maybe they are just comfortable with the style that they have and you know what that's okay really it is we're just going to talk about perhaps a different way to do the same thing and look a little bit more stylish. Ugly comfort shoes. Okay, there's no reason to wear ugly comfort shoes because there are so many cute ones out there that are comfort shoes. So don't just gravitate towards comfort, period, and not any style. Gravitate towards comfort and style. Some of my favorite brands that offer very stylish and current trends that are considered comfort shoes are Vionic. I think that's probably my favorite, Vionic. There's also Naturalizer. There's also uh, Easy Spirit, among many, many others. But those are just a few of my favorites. I don't think that you need to compromise style to have comfort. I think that it's easy to find both in the same pair of shoes. Undergarments. Let's talk bras and panties. So it's very important to have a bra that fits you well. And if you don't have one, I would suggest going to a department store where they do bra fittings and have someone help you to determine your size and get the right bra that fits you. So sometimes we can wear bras that are very tight, too tight actually, and then we have like the bulge hanging over, which is very unattractive if you can see that through the clothes. We don't want that. And then sometimes, this has happened with me, we have a bra that's too big and so it's like the cup is standing out farther than you and there's this gap in between and it just, your clothes don't lay nicely down. It's just, it's not a good look. So it's very important to have a bra that fits you. It's also very important to have the right type of bra that you like for the way that you feel comfortable and the way you want to present yourself. For instance, some women who have really large boobs, they want a minimizer bra. They want to minimize the look. And so there are great bras out there that are minimizer bras. And I will have everything that I'm sharing with you as an option will be linked down below of what, what I think would be a great thing to choose. So minimize our bras, then sometimes if we're going to an event and there is a plunging neckline in a, in a formal ball gown or something, there is a bra out there that has a plunging neckline. It goes down like that. There's a, a bra that's appropriate for so, just any occasion, really. And then on the occasions that you can't wear a bra, there's always the nip, nippy covers, I have that. I got that from Amazon. They work great, especially if you're small chested. Now, if you need support, that's not gonna work for you, but if you're small chested, you can get away with that unless it's hot outside. I have made the mistake of wearing them when it was hot outside and they just fell off. <laughs> so that won't work. 
but I will go ahead and list some of my favorite bras down below that I love, that I find are comfortable, they're affordable, and I just think that they're, I, I would highly recommend all of them. And, and on that note, I will just say, you wear whatever color you like, but I always gravitate towards nude because it doesn't show through things. Like I have a nude bra on right now. There are tiny little holes in this and you can't see the bra through because it's the same color as my skin. So there's that. Number three is the length of your pants. For instance, the capri length is really an unflattering length because it stops at the widest part of your leg, at your calf down here at the bottom of the widest part of the bottom part of your leg. And it's just not very flattering. It's not on anybody. You can be thin and have a great figure and it's just really not that flattering. And so what to wear instead? Well, there's all kind of links that are in style right now. There is a cropped that is really cute. Now that is a little bit lower than the capri, but it's not quite as long as maybe the ankle length. So the cropped length is gonna hit you at a smaller part of your leg and it's going to show that skin that just a little bit of skin down at the bottom of your leg that is going to make you look longer and leaner. Another great length is the ankle length and that is very popular right now. And the ankle length should hit you anywhere one to about two and three quarter inches above the ankle. You should see the ankle bone and then it should fall above the ankle there. That's a great length. But let me just say, I'm gonna stop and say, if you don't like those lengths, you do you. If you like capri pants, you wear those capri pants. You wear them with confidence and you wear them feeling good about yourself. I'm just trying to give you other options. If you want to try to stay current, if you want to try to stay in style, these are some things to choose instead of the capri length pants. Pantyhose. All right, so does anybody remember back in the day when we would buy pantyhose in the egg thing? And the, the color that we would get, I would get anyway, was suntan. <laughs> okay, that's not what we wanna do anymore. We do not want to have the suntan color pantyhose. I would say, when at all possible, don't wear pantyhose. Choose a, uh, a body uh, makeup that covers veins and such on your legs and try to go without. But look, sometimes you're going to have to wear pantyhose. There are some occasions where going without is inappropriate. Okay, so I'm gonna show you here some pictures of when it is appropriate. And basically it, it falls in a couple of different categories. So you wanna stay away from that sun tanny look. You want to try to match the color of your skin. If you're going for a very elegant look, maybe a, a cocktail party, or if you are an attorney and you are going to be in court, you, business meetings, uh, corporate meetings, when you want to look your best, then I would say choose a sheer pantyhose that is closest to your skin's color. And I'm gonna list three of my favorites in the description box below. And they're three different price points so that there's something for everybody. But I love these. I think that they're elegant and they are appropriate. Now, I'm not saying to never ever wear pantyhose. But what I am saying is be careful about the type of pantyhose that you choose so that you look in style and you look current and stylish and elegant and still having the comfort of wearing pantyhose if that's what you desire. Readers, okay, I am 56 years old and I am at a point in my life where I need readers. So it's not a well, don't wear them because it's not optional. I need to wear them. So, but there's a difference in readers. So if you just grab the drugstore kind that are just ugly like that, then it instantly ages you. But then if you grab a stylish pair like this, then 
all of a sudden it's cute and it doesn't look quite as old and yucky and it's so it's such an easy fix and they're very inexpensive i will link some of my favorites down below but it, that's just an easy fix that's quick and makes a big difference all right we're halfway done with our list of style mistakes that instantly age us before we go on i just wanted to say welcome or welcome back I'm so glad that you're here. If you're new, my name is Michelle and I put videos out here on YouTube every week. And they're mostly about fashion, but sometimes we'll throw skincare or travel or lifestyle or style tips like this in the mix. So let me know if you like this kind of video in the comments below and let's jump right back in. Let's talk about going gray. So some people don't want to do that. They're not quite ready for that. And so they pick coloring, which is great, which is what I do. Some people really are at the point where I'm ready for it. I I'm just going to embrace this and I'm going to go gray. So let's talk about the do's and don'ts and how that might work best for somebody that wants to go gray. I mean, yeah. So if you're somebody, first of all, that doesn't want to go gray and you would like to color your hair, I would say this. As you age, make sure that your color isn't so harsh against your skin tone that it's just a dramatic difference. It's almost like as we get older, our hair sort of gets a little bit lighter. So in other words, I have my roots done in a brown color because that's my natural color and then they put highlights in it and that sort of camouflages the gray a little bit. Now I'm still going to have roots, you know, I mean I'm going to have, but I try to get them done about every five to six weeks. Okay, now if you are going gray, my suggestion would be chat with your hairstylist and talk with her or him about how you can do that because it, there's some really beautiful ways to do that. Sometimes they can put color and highlights in to where it is so even when your hair grows out and it, and it becomes all gray that you don't have that chopped line of like dark hair, white hair, like skunk. That's really not a good, it's not very stylish. If you want to do that, that's fine. But if you want to look a little bit more stylish and a little bit more put together, I would say go ahead and go gray, but do it with your stylist and helping you to blend it in as you go and then eventually you will be full gray. Styles of jeans. So if it's your desire to stay stylish and stay up on the trends, then I would suggest investing in some jeans that are stylish now, this year. For instance, there's the slim ankle that's really popular. There is the wide leg, the flare, boot cut is popular. There's so many really cute styles of jeans, but don't get stuck in that pair that you've had for years that just really are not in style any longer. There's so many good, comfortable jeans out there too. Now, some styles hardly ever go out of style. And there, there's just some things that you can just hang on to and wear year after year, and that's fine. But when you see that something is no longer in style, just be willing to bend a little bit and try one of the newer styles, and you'd be surprised. What a difference a current style of jean can make and make you look a little bit more stylish and elegant. Earlier when we spoke about having a bra that fits you correctly, well the same thing goes with clothes. We need to be wearing clothes that fit us correctly. A lot of times, and I know this was me several years ago when I was quite a bit heavier, I gravitated towards tunic tops. That's all I wanted to wear because I just wanted to camouflage my middle area. And I never considered ever what I consider tucking in a shirt, ever. Like that was just not gonna happen. And I, that was my own insecurity because of my weight. But I shouldn't have just been looking for tent clothes. I should have been wearing clothes that actually fit my body at that size. I didn't like that size. But even if I didn't like it, I should still wear the size that fits me most comfortably and complements me at whatever weight I am currently at. 
So just keep that in mind. We don't want to wear things that are too tight. We don't want to wear things that are too loose because then we look frumpy and we don't want to look frumpy. We want to look put together. And so that's really it. Don't let your insecurities dictate what you will and won't put on your body if you really want to wear that, in other words. Makeup, all right. If you're still doing your makeup the same way that you did 20 years ago, 10 years ago, it's time for a change because you've aged and things are different now. For instance, I'm gonna give you some things that I've changed as I've gotten older. I used to wear all the time black eyeliner. Now, am I saying that black eyeliner is bad? No, but for me, as I aged, I wanted to have a softer look. So what I will do instead of a harsh black liner, I will take a dark eyeshadow color and sort of tap it underneath my eyelashes to about right here and then I'll kind of bring it up to a wing. I'll wing it and just put it barely here so that I have a color that is, you know, accentuating my eyes but it's not that harsh line any longer. Another thing that I do differently than I did years ago when I was younger is I was taught that you should um, suck your cheeks in to know where to put your blush. So we put it right there. I did that for so many years. But now my skin is not as plump <laughs> as it used to be. And so it drops. And so when we now, what I do when I put on blush is I will smile and I will go to put it on the apples of my cheeks, knowing that when I stop smiling, watch this, it's going to drop down a little bit. So I'm going to smile. Do you see that? <laughs> so I put it up a little bit higher than where I normally would because I know it's going to, when I smile like that, I don't necessarily want to put it there. I might want to put it here because when I stop, it's going to go down. So there's just tips and tricks like that as we age to do things a little bit differently than we used to. And, you know, sometimes we just don't know these things. How do you know these things? Well, I love watching YouTube videos about how to do this. I love watching Instagram videos. I love following people that give really good makeup tips and tricks. And that's how I learn. So that, it's just a great way to stay more current with your makeup. The last thing is hair. And I know we already talked about hair color, but let's talk about hair health. So it's very important to keep your hair looking healthy and shiny. And I know for me, as I have aged, my hair has gotten drier and it's just, it doesn't look as healthy as it did when I was younger. So I have to really work hard to keep my hair looking healthy. So there are ways to do this. First of all, I would say get regular trims. Get the dead ends cut off of your hair. You can still grow your hair and get it trimmed. You don't want to never cut your hair because you want it to get longer and then you've got all this like uh, fine, thin, yucky ends. You, you want to keep those uh, trimmed and healthy looking. Also, you want to make sure that you're using the right kind of shampoos, conditioners, hairsprays. You know, we talk about skincare and how important it is to use great skincare because we want our skin to look as best as it can. And the same is with hair. We shouldn't just buy yucky hair products that are inexpensive and think that our hair is going to look good and healthy. We need to invest in, and I'm not saying that they have to be expensive, but I'm saying they have to be good quality to make your hair look healthy. Now, another great thing to do is using dry shampoo because for me, I don't want to wash my hair every single day because it's dry and I don't want it to be drier for me washing it and doing all the things every day. So I will choose dry shampoo to get me through a couple of days and then shampoo it. So it's just another way to keep it healthy. Also, taking collagen is a great way to keep your hair healthy. And I don't think that having the same hairstyle 
that you've had for 20 years or 10 years is good either. It's time to switch it up and just talk with your stylist and see what she or he would recommend. I find what helps the most when I'm communicating is that I will find a picture of something I like. And I do this with color too. If I want my hair to be this color, I will bring in a picture. I'll actually bring in like two or three because what may what I may call like a caramel color in hair, that may mean something completely different to the girl that's doing my hair. And so just so that we're on the same page, I bring in pictures. The same can go with cuts, you know, if you want to wear your hair long, but you don't want it to be out of style, find some pictures of stylish hair that length and bring it in and show it to them. Um, if you want it shorter, same thing. Just make sure that you're staying current with your hair style and current with your hair health, making that a priority. I just want to reiterate one more time the importance of you doing what makes you feel the most beautiful, the most confident, and because that's when you're going to look the prettiest. That's when you're going to look the most stylish. If you are comfortable in your skin to wear what you want, by all means, you do you. I hope this video was helpful. I appreciate you hanging out with me today and I'll see you next week.